Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Well, I put up the seminar on YouTube uh, that I did the other day about meditation. Um, doesn't have all that many views yet. Um, and I would encourage you to view it because um, it was a great seminar, uh, great audience participation too, in terms of discussing some of the key points that, um, you know, I went over. Even if you're not looking for like an, an easy way to meditate, um, I'm pretty sure you're going to get something out of that um, seminar recording. So I'll put the link above. Um, uh, you know, in all seriousness, it's it's good. Um, so, yeah. Today I thought I would just kind of continue on with talking about why Emil Coué's philosophy and approach towards um, improving ourselves and manifesting better things in our lives. It's really like the the backbone of so much of this manifesting stuff. And one of the big differences between Kuei's approach and most of the other um, LOA teachers we hear about, more prominent LOA teachers, I mean, Kuei is, you know, even though he's not talked about a lot anymore, he's still famous, right? But the difference between his stuff, his, you know, and most of the other famous LOA teachers that we hear about a lot more, like Neville or Florence Scovel Shin or Emmett Fox or uh, Joseph Murphy or, you know, obviously the modern day teachers like Joe Dispenza or Abraham Hicks or, you know, whoever, whoever's hot right now. Um, the big difference is that Kue is just, he takes the spirituality out of it. He says, this is, this is a psychological function of the human being. What we think, what we suggest to ourselves constantly tends to come to pass. And um, he did not have to use religious language to explain that more clearly than anybody else that I have ever read or heard talk about these manifesting ideas. Um so he's a hugely valuable resource that, in my opinion, almost everybody who's into, uh, you know, manifesting law of assumption, law of attraction, whatever you want to call it, should be aware of Emil Kuei's approach, what he's talking about, his general philosophy. Again, this is not about um, his famous saying, his famous phrase, or if you want to call it affirmation. Every day in every way, I'm getting better and better or day by day in every way, I'm getting better and better. It's not about that. It's about everything that Kuwait talks about and brings to the table in regards to your imagination and which inspired just about everybody that came after him, including Neville, very much so, including Joseph Murphy, very much so. So if you're into Neville and into Joseph Murphy, but you've never read Kuwait, you are missing out, especially if... Some some of this stuff or a lot of this stuff doesn't make a lot of sense practically and psychologically speaking. It seems like far out there spiritual whatever, you know, for good and bad. It's very esoteric, a lot of things that uh, Murphy and, and Neville particularly talk about. That's not a bad thing. It just means that a lot of times it seems more complicated um, and unbelievable, perhaps, than the way that Kuei speaks about it in much more, you know, sensible, practical terms. And again, Kuei got better results working with people and worked with far more people than either Neville or Murphy. This guy is, he's the fucking teacher. The teacher of teachers, in my opinion. And I want to give you another example of that today from the book that we've read, read from a few times, uh, somewhat recently, Suggestion and Auto-Suggestion by Charles Baudouin. Um, 
this was written, I think, in 1921. Uh, Baudouin, you know, who was a psychologist, he was really the first person to, you know, give an extensive study of what Kuwait was doing. And, um, you know, it's not like Kuwait came up with all this stuff himself. He was inspired by the great hypnotists that came before him in France and internationally, you know? This stuff just... <laughs> it's hugely important to, to check out, in my opinion. You know, I'm not an academic or a historian. But, uh... Unfortunately, I have to play one on YouTube because people are so ignorant of um, the history of a lot of these manifesting ideas and how they're applied. Let me read you this passage from Suggestion and Not a Suggestion by Charles Baudelaire. He writes, To express a sentiment one does not feel is not always to lie. For he who expresses a sentiment begins to feel it. And by reiterating the expression of the sentiment, one may inflame it to a passion. Like the liar who ends up believing his own falsehoods, we are caught in our own snare. So, you know, in that, here he's talking about how we basically incorrect, have incorrect sentiments, right? And that we basically screw ourselves over by what we are suggesting to ourselves. He goes on to write here uh, by quoting Pascal. He says, by talking of love, says Pascal, we fall in love. It's the easiest thing in the world. And later Pascal writes, one can hardly feign love without being very near to being in love, or at least to being in love somewhere. For this simulation is not possible without having the mind and the thoughts of love. It is always the same principle. You would not have sought me had you not already found me. That's a quote. Uh, you would not have sought me had you not already found me that Neville was very fond of as well. Again, you see the direct connection with what Baudelaire's talking about here and quoting Pascal and what Neville was to talk about later, you know, 20, 30 years later. Baudouin goes on to write, Whatever may have been the primary origin of a passion, we may affirm that its most conspicuous character, that from which its name is derived, is passivity. Or rather, our passivity in relation to it. And it's considerably intensified by spontaneous suggestion. So this is very interesting. Kue, like Neville later on and Murphy, said we don't force ideas into being. We imagine ideas into being. And we're most effective at doing this often in a passive state, which is why they, you know, stayed akin to sleep and, you know, and being passive and relaxed when you're doing visualization exercises or doing affirmations, why that's suggested as a, as a good guideline is for these reasons. Baudouin says something very interesting here that's definitely true and that you can relate with. He says, furthermore, the very origin of the passion is in most cases an imita imitative suggestion. An imitative suggestion. Like the well-to-do idler who studies his own symptoms until he succeeds in discovering in himself indications of all the ills that flesh is, is heir to. Or the adolescent, giving free, given free rein to his wandering thoughts, discovers in himself the symptoms of the passion of which he has read so many descriptions, right? Or the schoolboy who recalls the great passions he has studied, that he has studied, that of Phaedra, that of Venus, wholly devoted to running down her quarry, or the girl in the convent school, impersonates herself as the heroine of some idol written for some reader such as herself. She goes on to give a few more examples. And he says, Each lad and lass suggests to himself or to herself the form of passion which has presented itself to his or her imagination. Each is stamped often for life with the imprint of these early suggestions. So um, that's some 
<laughs> great observation and very true. It's funny, you know, um, my friend Stacy, we were just, we have our, our text chain that Cecilia and Maggie are on as well. Um, you know, we started talking about William Blake and, you know, imagination. And then we moved on to Jim Morrison. And um, Stacy and I were both just saying, like, this is like 10 minutes ago, um, how, like, you know, Jim Morrison was like, he was like both of our idols, like when we were 14, we didn't know each other then, but we, you know, we knew Jim Morrison, a lot of, a lot of kids that age were, you know, Jim Morrison was, you know, one of their heroes back, this is back in the 90s. Um, but that just underscores the point that like what we get really into and are passively into when we're young, we unconsciously imitate. And we suggest to ourselves that this is what our life is going to be like. So the TV shows that we watch, right? When we're just being passive. We're just, we think we're doing nothing. But we're really watching a TV show and very um, open to suggestibility when we do that. You know, and then we get into stuff. You know, we get into playing certain video games or get into certain music. And these things we get into... Um, take on imaginatively for both good and bad you know there's many good things that i can say about having jim morrison as a passive influence in my life and there's several bad things i can say about that too right um it's so interesting and when we talk about suggestibility this way it just, it, again, it just makes more practical sense than talking about it in like, you know, the 3D and the 4D and using all these esoteric terms and how everybody is you pushed out. How about just like, what are you suggesting to yourself? What are you suggesting to yourself? And suggestion happens very, very quickly. Very quickly. Um, we can't help but be constantly suggesting things to ourselves because we can't help but be thinking. And one thing Kuei says is, a way to start suggesting better things to ourselves is to just take advantage of this mechanical function of thinking where it's like you automatically are thinking, right? When you're awake, you're thinking. You're, when you're asleep, you're thinking too. But you're consciously thinking when you're awake. And if you're thinking negative thoughts or constantly are, are not getting the results you want in your life, you don't feel good, you simply can affirm start affirming silently or out loud to yourself throughout, you know, certainly when you're in a passive state in the morning and evening, but also throughout the day, the way Sammy Ingram talks about it, or the way we've discussed in like, you know, many of the videos I've done about Sammy's approach and the general approach of like active affirming, right? Where you are mechanically saying something to yourself, which neutralizes all those bad auto suggestions that you're having, all those bad thoughts that you're having. And if you keep on suggesting it to yourself for long enough, it's going to shift that bad stuff more and more out of your mind. And it's being replaced by this good suggestion. See, for me, the, the law of attraction or law of assumption or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't get much deeper than this. This is not like an incredibly spiritual practice for me. I like spiritual language in it because it's interesting sometimes, but it's much more about what am I thinking, what am I suggesting to myself, and how can I modify that, shift that, so that I can better, quote-unquote, control my thinking and, you know, direct it more to, towards my liking. I hope that, you know, more people talk about this on YouTube. Right now they don't. But I think for many people, it's much more valuable what we're discussing right now than any of the esoteric stuff that may be true, may not be true, that may work for you, may not work for you. Changing what you're suggesting to yourself, doing active affirming the way that, you know, people like Kue and Charles Baudouin explain and that Sammy Ingram talks about in terms of just actively saying something over and over again to yourself, um, it does something. And things that do something to you are what we should utilize if we want, if we, if we want to go that path. There's plenty of other tools, but 
this is so close to the heart of uh, this law of attraction stuff, law of assumption stuff. And it's neglected for more esoteric and fancy techniques. We don't need to do that. Again, we can kiss. We can keep it simple, stupid. And we can utilize techniques and tools that actually work for us and that we know work for us. That's why I was talking about that meditation thing the other day. Because it, it works. It does something. You know, jumping up and down. You know, being playful. Moving your body a lot. That does something to us. Not only physically, but psychologically. Mind and body together. And so does auto-suggestion the way that Kuwait is talking about it, the way Charles Baudouin is talking about it, and the way that Sammy talks about it today. We can't help but think. And if we don't like what we're thinking, we can mechanically start replacing a lot of those thoughts with the thoughts that we want to have. So I hope this was helpful. If you want coaching about this very simple but subtle topic, you know where to reach me, RadicalCounselor.com. Until next time.